What's up, guys? Um, today I wanted to uh, really look into uh, exploring Nintendo Power, which was a big, big thing in my life. Um, it came out in '88, and uh, when it came out, it was like so awesome. They had first they had the Nintendo Fun Club. I never subscribed to that, but I had friends at school who would give me a uh, copies when they're done. And after that. When Nintendo Power came out, man, it was history. I'd, I remember getting off the school bus, running towards the mailbox. I had to walk maybe half a mile. So I'd be running all the way, man. Get Nintendo Power, go home, take a huge dump, and just read Nintendo Power, man. All right, so here we are. This is a CBR file. Scan it to CBR. Uh, here it is. Very first issue. I remember the claymation thing. I thought, damn, that'd make a badass animation if they did that. So let's look in. Let's look into this. Hold on. We go to full screen. There we go. Welcome. This is our premiere issue of Nintendo Power. These hotlines, dude. I remember calling. What, what, what game was it, man? It was a... It was Batman on NES, and I don't remember what boss it was, but um, I remember calling, and they hung up on me, and I never called back again. I just felt like, I don't know, defeated, like it, was, it wasn't it was meant to be, but eventually I uh, got some friends to tell me how to beat him. Which guy was it? I think it was where you fight the, uh, the computer. It's like a huge master computer or something. Super Mario Brothers 2. Second Quest of Zelda. Uh, RBI, never played that. Wasn't a big sports guy unless it was Double Dribble. Double Dribble was a good game. Uh, I remember Howard and Nestor. Double Dragon, that was a shit. Gauntlet was a shit. Love Contra. Never got into any game shows. But here we are, Super Mario Brothers 2. It all started late one night when our hero Mario had a very strange dream. In his dream, he climbed up a long, winding stairway leading to a door. When he opened the door, he saw a world unlike anything he had ever seen before. As he peered into this wondrous world, he suddenly heard someone say in a faint and distant voice, Welcome to the world of dreams, the land of Subcon. We have been waiting for you, Mario. We want you and your friends to fight against the evil ruler, Wart, and bring peace back to the world of dreams. I'm going to tell you a story that, um, it's really fucked up, man. Sorry for swearing. Anyway, the first Nintendo I got was with, uh, was the whole set with Rob, and it came with Jeremite, Duck Hunt, and, um, I remember getting that. We lived in Gilbert, Arizona then. I remember getting home from school. My mom you gotta get me this game. It was like I think it was like five hundred, six hundred dollars or something for the whole set. It's right when it came out. They had the black box games like pro wrestling. No, wait, it was pro wrestling. I don't think so. Maybe it was. Um, but anyway, talked my mom into getting it. I brought it home. Used Rob. Rob didn't. I remember Rob not working too well. He just got put back into the box. And um, I used to play Gyromite with one controller stuck like over the other, like overlapping it. Because on the other controller, Rob opens the doors for you. There's like red and blue doors. So I remember doing that. I played a lot of that. Duck Hunt. Always played Duck Hunt. But those were the two only two games I had. It was like my mom put me on. Wasn't buying me anything after buying that. Ah, I need some water. But anyway, fast forward. We moved to Prescott, which my, was my original hometown. And I remember this kid next door had it in television. He had pretty much every single game. I don't remember how many games, but it was like two boxes full. And he talked me into trading my Nintendo for his Intellivision. And being the stupid kid that I am, not knowing how popular uh, Nintendo was going to be, I only had two games. So it was like, do I want to play Gyromite and Duck Hunt for the rest of the year? Or do I want to take a chance to get an Intellivision and play this whole collection of games. So I went for the trade and it was the worst thing I ever done in my life because I remember going to my friend's house and he had all these badass Nintendo games and going, man, I wish I would have kept my Nintendo. So 
it was it was a real drag, man. So I had that television for a long time, and I, what did I trade it for? I, I used to trade a lot as a kid, man. It was horrible. Uh, I traded it for I think a laser tag set that came with like eight guns. Anyway, I was done with I was done with uh in television. I think the only game I really played was uh what was it a carnival game? But anyway, let's go back to the book. All right, so we got Mario, Luigi, Toad. I rarely use Mario. I use Toad a lot. Once I saw the cartoon, I thought Toad was awesome. Learned how to jump three different ways. I remember charging. Took me a while to figure that out because I didn't read the instruction booklet. Oh, yeah, what I was going to tell you was I actually bought Mario 2 before I had a Nintendo because my whole plan, I, the thing was I didn't have a Nintendo to uh, – play on and there was no way my mom's gonna spend more money on a new nintendo so i bought the game talked about wanting to get in the game and i'd go over to my friend's house and play it and it was like dude i want my nintendo back i was like bummed out but as fate would have it i got another nintendo i did a paper route i rocked ass at my paper route everything was on time Got my Nintendo, got The Legend of Zelda, and after that, I really started slacking. All the bosses that it was the Daily Courier hated me. My mom had to take over the paper route and finish it for me, and I felt, right now I feel bad for her, for like, I should have just, just rocked the hut and got it done, put my two weeks in until they got a new paper boy, but yeah, that was messed up. All right, what else we got here? Do the little boss toss. That was awesome. That was ingenious. Um, what was his name? Damn. Mauser. That's it. Um, I remember this level. Uh, I think it doesn't show up, but the levels that I really disliked were, I think it was four. It just got, it got apeshit hard after a while. But I eventually beat that. Zelda. Zelda is a big part of my life. Never finished the second quest. Let's see. You were brave enough to beat all of Ganon's henchmen in the first quest. Were you crafty enough to find a way through the many, I can't read the hazards, to Ganon's lair? And then were you mighty enough to take on Ganon, the ultimate bad guy, and win? If your answer is yes, get ready for another super challenge. The second quest of The Legend of Zelda, the land of Hyrule, st Hyrule still neat, still isn't safe. You beat Ganon once, but you must do it again. And can you be, be victorious the second time around? Sharpen your sword and your wits. I have played the new Zelda. It is awesome. The only thing I don't like is the weapon breakage. I'm taking a break for it, from it for a while. This whole day today is devoted to me, and I'm not really gaming too much. All right, what's the difference from the first quest? The structure of the second quest is almost the same as the first quest, except for three geographical features. But you still have to think over your strategy because things like hidden caves in the second quest are located in different places. If you want to know the location of things in detail, check the attached map. Rock, man. So, level one, level two, level three. Oh, dude. That's right, it's spelled Zelda. Look at E L A. Well, kind of. I remember Bubble. Screw Bubble. Can't use my sword. I remember the first time I beat Zelda. I still have the picture uh, my mom took. And Link. I remember staring at this for the longest time, thinking, dude, this is so awesome. When you look at it, Zelda was the first open world game. So it's pretty much like. I love open world games. That was my first open world game experience. Did you defeat Ganon successfully? Are you waiting for more exciting action, danger, and adventure? Get ready. Nintendo has something really exciting in the works. It's something this fall. It's it's coming this fall. And if you like The Legend of Zelda, you'll love what's coming up. I didn't like The Link, uh, the Adventure of Link too much. I will say that. It was hard as shit. As most of you know, I do not like platformers. Um, Mario was cool. But there was something about... There's just a lot of cheap deaths, cheap deaths in the Adventure of Link. Oh, here's the map. Nice. And the fold-out poster map. That was cool on the wall. 
And it looks like the poster is, is it RBI Baseball? Yes, it is. Baseball Roundup. Sorry, skipping this. Wasn't a big sports fan. Like to play it, but not Nintendo form. Ghosts and Goblins, man. Before, when you look at it when I was younger, they didn't have internet. So if you want to look something up, you pretty much have to figure it out yourself, learn it from someone at school, or quit the game. And Ghosts and Goblins, is there a stage select? Also, how do I beat the Red Devil? Let's start with the stage select question. Hold the control pad right and push the B button three times. Then press up and release. Next, press B three times, push left, release, and then B three times. Damn, push down, it's still going. Release and push B three more times, then press start. Select the A button or A button at this time. Push start once more. Now you're on the right track. Next strategy is to fend off the red devil. When you find a red devil at the right sky or side of the screen, throw a spear at him or a dagger, dagger's roll, and quickly run back to the left. If he does not follow after you, then your strategy will be a big success. The next time you move to the right, the red devil will not appear. Ring King. Played that. Wasn't too good at it. I'm more of a punch out guy. While I'm in while I'm playing Ring King, sometimes the letter P appears in the ring. What does it mean? Doesn't it say an instruction booklet? When the letter P appears, you're in luck. Protect yourself from your opponent's punches and go grab the P immediately. Whether you actually win the match or not, your power points will go up by one after the match. Doesn't it have like uh is there RPG elements in it where your boxer gains like attributes? Metroid, that's a hard game. In Metroid, I have a hard time finding the power-up items. I usually get wiped out before I find them. Can you help? Uh, no sense in reading that because he's given a map. Long beam, Varia, bomb, Maru Mari, ice beam, high jump, ice beam. Wait, two ice beams? Ice beam, ice beam, that's right. Screw attack and wave beam. Uh, first time I played Metroid was over at this kid's house. I traded him. What game was it? Uh, Spy Hunter for Metroid. He had a hard time getting through Metroid. Didn't really like it. I love Metroid. And so I said, hey, man, I got this game, Spy Hunter. Best game ever, bro. You got to play it. And I somehow talked him into it. And I remember a couple of years later in school, he's like, man, I shouldn't have traded you. That's how I got Metroid. I remember overselling it, like, oh, check it out, man, you get boats. Oh, it's awesome. Soon you get a helicopter. I think I lied there. That was messed up of me. All right, Super Mario Brothers, you all know the one-up thing. Kid Icarus, no matter what I do, I cannot bring Hugh Draw. Please give me some advice. Hugh Draw's weak point is his head. Try the strategy first. Jump above his head, avoiding his fiery attack. Then wait a moment, study his moves carefully, and go after his weak point for the win. That's an easy one. Rygar, I was playing that the other day. I figured out how to get Pegasus Flute, but now I don't know what to do with it. When you reach the top of the high, highest tower in Ro Rosa Valley, you will see Ligar's castle. When you play Pegasus Flute, you must be on the subscreen to play the flute. The entrance to this castle will appear. Never got that far. That's cool. Castlevania. No matter how many times I try, I can't seem to beat the five boss characters. Can you give me some pointers? Queen Medusa, she can be stopped by the watch. Mummies, be sure to take them out one at a, at a time. Frank, the dagger or firebomb, will take the spring out of a step. I believe there is also a... Isn't there a food there? Reaper. Dude. Boomerang or Dagger will make sure that he doesn't come back to haunt you. Screw those sides. They mess me up. The Count Boomerang to the head will cool his jets. And you didn't mention that he turns this huge demonic creature that just Fs you up. Akari Warriors. There is a secret built-in continue. ABBA. Everybody knows that. What the hell is this though? Look at Oh, the stage select. One is selecting... Let me see... Push up, down, A, A, B, left, right, A, B, up, A, down, dude. Enough of that. Mike Tyson's punch out. I have several bouts with Tyson. However, I have never beaten him. Please help. I want to win the dream bout. 
If you can help yourself out a great deal by knocking out Tyson's ability to use his Dynamite Punch, just don't let him land one in the first minute and a half round. Then start landing as many strategic counter blows as you can to wear him down gradually. Earn points towards your victory. And fighting Tyson, I beat him, I would say, about five years ago. And, oh my gosh, man. It was a pain in the ass, I'll say that much. All right, Howard and Nestor. Hello, I'm Howard Phillips, president of Nintendo Fun Club, and this is my good friend Nestor. I should be president playing Zelda today. I see you should have found levels 8 and 9 by now. Oh, I'm just messing around. I know where they are. I can't find them. He's, he thinks to himself, I bet you've forgotten where they are. Oh, he's, fool he's taking advantage of Howard's knowledge. You think you're so smart. Are you kidding? Level 8 is hidden in the second screen up, third from the right, under the tree in the path. Ah, I didn't check that tree. Level 9 is under a rock in the sixth screen from the left to the top. Use the map in pages 35 and 6 of this magazine. I should have looked there. Anything else I can help you with? Yes, er, I mean, no, I already knew where they were at. I could have found them on my own. Thanks for stopping by. See you next issue. And of course, Nestor, speaking low of our dear Howard Phillips. Is that his name, Howard Phillips? This reminds me of when I got Zelda, and I I think I was like, it was summer vacation, and this kid came over. I can't remember his name, but he came over, and he started playing this game. He started a new character. He's like, let me show you how to, a lot of the tricks here. He was showing me caves. He was showing me, uh, what was it? He was showing me how to get through the uh, forest. Everything, man. All right, classified information. Pull the goalie and go for it. I remember that game. Ice hockey, Contra, of course. Yo, Konami code. Gun smoke. What's this? Heavy hitting hardware. When it's you or them, when it's a you or them decision, it's time to pull out the heavy artillery. There's no time to mess around with a single shot weapon. Put in the command above. Wow, I didn't know that. You see, you learn something new every day. The title screen appears, push A button four times, and then select button four times. Then press the control pad right twice. Finally, damn, I'm going to have to remember that, man. And, of course, Rad Racer. Who doesn't love that? Are you ready for a hot race? Start your game by choosing your car. And get a demonstration screen. Next, increase the, uh, I'm trying to think. What is this about? Is this a secret tra track? Pure position, start on level track four. Wow, I did not know this one either. You can start from course eight. This way you can choose from any course you want to start from. The final scene has a surprise of its own. Use a tachometer trick to see it. Is it that? You're showing me it. Athena. I have played the arcade version of Athena. Punch out. Of course, pass keys. Before save files. Flame and Fortune. Never played that. Or Ninja Kid. Never played that. Ring King, I don't know about Ring King, Xanak, oh, Double Dragon, I love this game. This was pretty much like the first Street Fighter when you think of it, because they had a versus mode that was very much like a the fighting games we have now. And this reminds me of Fist of the North Star, I wonder if they took some uh, inspiration from that. And unlocking these moves was like the best thing ever, a lot of people... You know, they don't like the Double Dragon, but I love Double Dragon, man. I think my favorite move is the uh, the pin attack, which is this one right here. You have to earn that. I forgot what the uh, I forgot what the requirements were, the XP. Anyway, here's Double Dragon. Of course, you know, once you get up here, you can go back down and still defeat. What was his name? Did they have the names? No. Was it Chin? I remember a Bobo. Oh, Chin Ties. I think that's his name. And of course, you can dip out on a Bobo. I beat this game finally. Shadow Boss. Who was the Shadow Boss? Gauntlet. That was a shit. I remember the arcade. Um, played the game. Didn't get too far. Maybe halfway through it, it became a rental, and then I eventually bought it. But I remember a lot. Gauntlet was one of my popular games that a lot of people wanted to borrow. Zelda, Super Mario 3, people want to borrow that when I first got it. The Castlevania 2, I think, when it first came out. After people saw 
what it really was that kind of gave it back quick. Here's we go Contra. Everyone knows Contra. I don't need to say much about that. Never played Wheel of Fortune. Legendary Wings. Yeah. Bro, I remember. I'm not going to say his name. I don't know if he watches my stuff. But I had this friend who actually spent a night at his house. And his games were Ring King, Legendary Wings, and Jackal. And I would try to play Legendary Wings with him. I always get like blown away, and he'd end up like he would uh, get farther than me. But I remember <laughs> he would, if he lost, he would take his controller and swing it around and freaking just slam shit. And he would he would destroy that controller. And I remember his parents buy him like the uh, NES Max, NES Advantage. They ended up smashed. And this kid was like well off to where he could afford it. But I remember like kind of instigating the whole thing. Like telling him what to do. I remember I'm like, hit the TV with the controller and it just, I remember it just came apart. Iron Tank, I remember playing that with a friend. We got pretty far. Gunsmoke, Rambo. When I was in my teens, we moved to this place called Maricopa and it was so boring. There was nothing to do. Dude, I, I learned this game in and out. I learned all the bugs, I learned all the locations of everything. That game and uh, Wall Street Kid, I just, I destroyed on that. Metal Gear, remember Metal Gear? Bionic Commando was a shit. Never played City Connection. Victory Road, I remember regretting my purchase of this. Kmart would not take it back. We bought this game and it just, it wasn't like, I never played Victory Road in the arcade, but it wasn't like the, the Akari Warriors that I remember. Star Force never played that. Freedom Force, I always wanted to play that because it uses the zapper. And Pack Watch. Dude, this was like. This is when you just stare at this and wonder is this game really coming out? Like GoGo13, I remember. I saw something on GoGo13, and then when, they, when I saw a game coming out, and this is way before, like when animation became big, I had a buddy who showed me a bunch of GoGo13 stuff. But anyway, um, back then it was called Japanimation. I remember going to Hastings and it was called the Japanimation uh, row, whatever, where they put the videos. But anyway, I used to look at this and go, damn, these games are awesome. Some of them would come out, though. Indiana Jones was coming out. I remember playing the arcade. I was psyched about that. 1943, I played the arcade in that. It was, it was, uh, I think I eventually got that one. Did I? No, no, I, th I might have borrowed it. Yeah, I think I did. Anyway. Of course, Zelda 2 Adventure of Link. And I think that's it, man. This is Nintendo Power. Um, let's see. Official players' books. Those were awesome. Of course, they had the celebrity. Celebrities did Pee Wee Herman play pick uh Nintendo? I think let's talk about the movie. Um I have this book finally, I always wanted it. Always had this book. Never left my collection. Celebrity profile, Kirk and Candace Cameron. What games did they play? And their few current favorite games include Rygar, Super Mario Brothers, The Legend of Zelda, Gradius, and Pinball. Is it Gradius or Gradius? Anyway, let's read the mailbox. I've read Howard Phillips has close to 300 games for the NES. I would like to know if it is possible for you to send me some of the names of the games he has. Also, are there ever going to be made? What? Also, are there ever going to be made available for the public? Oh, I almost forgot. Could you tell me the exact name of the theme song from Spy Hunter? Be patient. There are already over 100 games available for the NES. The best of what Howard reviews will surely make it to the stores. By the way, the music of Spy Hunter is a theme from Peter Gunn. Does he think like Howard Phillips like has secret like a exclusive stash of games? Because he probably does. If you are like I am, that is crazy about martial arts. The Legend of Kai is it Kage or Cage? Oh, I said Cage. Is a game for you. I don't see how they could get in all this fun and adventure in one game pack in the name of in the game you are cage i'm gonna say cage a young ninja warrior with a dangerous task to save the shogun's daughter princess kiri 
from the clutches of the evil warlord Yuki. On your journey, you will encounter evil. Is he like advertising this? I'm going to skip that. Go, Grandma. Our grandson Chad McElroy, seven years, received a Nintendo system and games from Santa this year. They were visiting our farm, and therefore we got a good preview of the game. He decided to leave his NES at the farm for, for the time being. So each Friday, he and I have been playing. Have been playing. We have played Super Mario Bros. 1942, Commando, and Kung Fu. But while Chad is home, I am left with the NES. I have been practicing, and I think that he will be surprised that I'm getting very close to at least seeing the hostages before I bite the dust in Commando. Damn, that grandma's hardcore. hardcore. I remember that game was freaking hard. Chad decided to take the NES home so that he and his friends could play, of course. Why would he leave it there? I told my husband that we must get another system for Chad, and he comes to the farm on when he comes to the farm on Fridays. After searching the Dallas area, I finally found one. I have it installed, and now we have one at the farm and one in the city. This story must be somewhat boring to you, but considering that Chad is seven and I am fifty five, it shows your marketing potential, which we found out with the uh we old people love the we thanks for writing we think you're right the nes is fun for kids of all ages we wish we heard from more players in your age group we know you're out there of course they are my friends and i have a club called videoizers here are a few suggestions from other clubs try saving up weekly for a new tape every month i mean cartridge i guess some people call them tape mm. My throat's dry from reading. It's like I'm in a hot desert. In our club, we save a few dollars a week for extra money. We call the Nintendo Hotline. <laughs> How much did it cost? Yo, in the freaking 80s, it was all about, like, in commercials, like, call the He-Man Hotline. And <laughs> I had this friend who called the He-Man Hotline, and I think it rang up for, like, I think it was over, like, $500. But what the hell, man? What does He-Man have to say that... I don't know. I got to look into that. But anyway, they had He-Man Hotline. They had Princess Hotline. They had even, uh, who was it? It was the uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince had their hotline. I remember that commercial. I remember there being a Santa Claus hotline. I remember there being a bedtime. Dude, it was like all over. All right, back to this. The game Rygar has some of the best graphics Nintendo's, Nintendo has ever used. Besides the music and the character interaction in this game are superb. The music is very appealing to the player and does not make he or she bored after lengthy play. To give better sense of the action in the game, the characters are animalized and have special unique ways of moving around. There is also a wide variety of creatures so you don't get tired of the same ones over and over and over again. Another good, very good point to mention are the different views in which Rygar, the main character, is shown. The two views are used are a horizontal view and the view of looking down from the helicopter. Really? Use a game that has only one view on the character, but Rygar shows the... I can't read. Ugh, falling asleep. But anyway, this is like a chat room right here. Or a forum. This is like the closest you get to a forum in the 80s. Metroid has to be one of the best games ever made, at least the most challenging. Anyone who plays this game cannot say it's easy. You really have to use your mind in for this game. The things... Yeah, you do. I remember getting lost in that. The things that make this game so popular are the graphics, sound, the challenge, and enemies. Sooner or later, you will figure out the secret passageways. There are a lot. You must go back and read the instructions to get more clues. If you don't want to get lost in this planet, you must make maps. Did I make maps? I don't think I did. Another great thing is that you do not get many free weapons. You have to earn them. It is not easy to find them all. There are a lot of secrets. If you have this game or are going to get it, you will enjoy it for a long, long time. Keep making more games like this. As a lot of players share your sentiments about Metroid, there are many secrets yet to be discovered. So if you find any new ones, be sure to let us know about them. I can't read. Uh, read this short one. My friend has recently bought your basic set. In doing so, he acquired the official... I got that. The official Nintendo Player's Guide. If it's possible, can I have one? For free? You can buy it at many of our favorite NES retailers to order by credit card of eleven ninety five or play like a hundred bucks on eBay for a good copy. Alright. Reading all this is really parching me. NES achievers, you ever try to beat these? I was never a big score guy. Highest in nineteen forty two is four hundred and forty seven thousand. 
I don't even think I could beat these. I don't even know. Take your best shot. Do you ever wonder how you stack up against NES players on your favorite games? You can check it out right here in every issue. Video Spotlight. Our club is called the NES Masters. We know right off who our power player is. His name is Ace Ab. Damn. He writes to Nintendo all the time telling them his accomplishments on games. His hobbies are play, playing Nintendo games. Period. <laughs> He has no he has no pets instead he plays Nintendo all day. He beat Metroid in three days, Tyson in five, saves Zelda in five, and and finished Super Mario Brothers. I was just laughing about that because uh, he writes he writes to Nintendo all the time telling him accomplishments all his games. So I'm thinking Howard Phillips, who the fuck is this ASAP guy? Alright, let me see. Of the many people in our Nintendo playing group, I was choose I choose Mike Welch. Welch. Everyone knows him. He was the first person I know to beat Mike Tyson. He I'm gonna say right there, if he could do that, he's a fucking badass. He also he was also the first person to beat the great Puma. I remember beating him. He was the first person to get to the end of Russian Attack. I did that. And he was the first person to beat the level three team on double dribble. Did I do that? I'll have to play later and find out. He only owns or has owned one of the games mentioned. Some of the tips he told us about Mike Tyson's punch out were be ready to dodge Mike Tyson's uppercuts for the first minute and 30 seconds of the first round. In the second round, when Tyson's eyes flash red, he'll try to hit you, move and hit him in the face. Punch him in the face and he'll get knocked down. The reason he was good at pro wrestling was because he played track and field a lot and he always pressed A and B buttons. That does help. I remember dudes setting up like when I used to go to, uh, I think it was Peter Piper Pizza, and we're talking 80s at track and field there, some dude had like a pencil and did some weird shit where he was making him run fast. All right, so uh, in your February, March edition, you asked some power players. I think I am good, a good player. My best game is Super Mario Brothers. My best game, I had 160 men, damn, with over 1,100,000 points without a time warp. Dude's killing it. My fastest game without warping and saving the princess was 10 minutes and 23 seconds. What? My fastest game without warping and saving the princess was t shit. Is that possible? I, I have saved the princess four times in one game without losing more. <laughs> and two men I have have never been beaten. <laughs> I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm not sure that there are a better player that that there is a better player at Super Mario Brothers than I am I just hope someday I find a better player because I always like a good challenge damn can you do it in 10 minutes I guess you could if I don't know what the hell power player where we live is a fellow by the name of Kevin Stevens he can break all the records he has solved Super Mario Brothers in two weeks yeah this kid did it in 10 minutes he has solved all right the Legend of Zelda in one week, in five days. Wait, one week in five days. I guess that, yeah, that's pretty good. Metroid in three weeks. This sounds more tangible than the other kid. Metroid in three weeks. Kid, Kid Icarus in or Icarus. Why am I saying Icarus? Yo, I used to say Icarus back in the day, and then I was corrected. Never said it like that again. Now I'm saying it again. In one weekend, Renegade in one weekend. Fuck that game, dude. Renegade. Oh man. Yo, I remember, um, oh, there's this, uh, okay, I gotta say this, Renegade, I, dude, I rage quit at this game, and I broke the, the case, I was pissed, this game pissed me off, uh, there's this place called Missy Movies, I was always there, I used to rent martial art movies there, I used to rent horror movies there, and, uh, I gotta, I gotta wrap this up, anyway, I got Renegade, and this game pissed me off, I wanted to beat it so bad, and the plastic cases, the rental cases that they have, I tore it in two. I was so pissed. And then I realized what it did. I was like, ah, oh, fuck. And so what I did was I put it I put it together as best I could. I super glued the shit out of it. It looked it looked melted, man. It was horrible. I gave it back to my mom, put the game in the next day. And the next thing I know, they called me on the phone. The dude, like, bitched me out. I never went back there again. It was my fault. I feel bad about it. But, damn, <laughs> that was crazy. All right, so we were Renegade. 
where is it? Where is it? Double Dragon. He has. Oh shit, he beat Kyrie Warriors. He is looking forward to your new game packs Contra Gauntlet, Kyrie Warriors 2, Super Mario Brothers 2, and Double Dragon. He is official member of Nintendo Fun Club, and his favorite game is a Kyrie Warriors because of teamwork. He says he's played Sega, one of your rivals around here. <laughs> one of your rivals around here, and said Sega doesn't come close to Nintendo. Genesis does. The reason for this is because Nintendo gets all the arcade hits, which is true. The phrase, now you are playing with power, is very true to him. Some of his tips and secrets are Metroid, collect as many energy as possible. No shit. Release fireballs will freeze on the spot with ice beam. Fight Kraid very close using bombs and missiles. Top gun fly high to avoid missiles on level 2. And you've got to know how to land. Uh, Kid, Icar Kid Icarus. Enter each fortress with full capacity. Howard Phillips like, no shit. Uh, Mega Man, use other men's weapons. Use other men's weapons to defeat each other. Yo, this guy's telling us shit we already know. Rygar, have a lot of health. Legend of Zelda, have medicine and purchase NES, an NES advantage. I like, the, I like the freaking pad. And uh, my brothers get plenty of men. Okay, I wish I could see that closer. I like when people draw stuff like that. We have elected Brian Brewer for our power player because we've had our NES for almost a year. Brian has had his own only three months. We elected him because he was one of the first to pass Ganon twice. Second course. Also, he passed Mother Brain and Bowser on Super Mario Brothers at 8-4. He has a Commodore 128, and he gets his famous kill from there. I'm going to have to play that. He also has been elected vice president of our club. He likes to play baseball. Clubs are always weird as a kid. I don't know what it is, man, but it never worked out for me and my friends. We just rode bikes and freaking broke windows in abandoned houses. We are the broken window club. But anyway, he also played baseball, basketball, damn, and soccer. His favorite games are Mike Tyson's Punch Out, Metroid, Zelda, Kid, Akiris. And likes drawing and actually pretty good at it and we asked for tips he gave us these three how do you knock down mike tyson well mike likes to go in and, and close and let you have it dodge right and then left and then if you dodge them both you show him a one two punch can do and then mike's mad just dodge the best you can and smack smack him with a star punch and he goes down isn't that easy man i metroid how do you deal with low energy crisis well, I try to keep a low profile profile with the monster aliens, whatever. I love my NES advantage because I just explode with rays. Well, how do you do it? Well, okay. Well, I try to keep a low profile with monsters or aliens or whatever. So just running away. You just farm it, man. Eric Mass, Nintendo Power Player 14. Favorite games, Metroid, Kid Icarus. This is all the shit. Trampoline jumping. And solving his and his friends' Nintendo games. One and a half cats. Suki and Muffin. Muffin is half mad. Siblings. The other one other Evan. Uh, Nintendo to become a dentist and become a Nintendo game counselor. That's good goals. Solve every existing Nintendo game. Someone's done that. Why is he a power player? Good reflexes. All right. I can't. I can't read no more. It's top 30. I agree with this. Yes. All these. I agree with all of them. Super Mario Brother or RC Pro Am. Yeah. That was a badass game. Rad Racer. That's it, man. Um, let me know what you think of this. If you like it, I'll do it some more. I have other Nintendo Power things. I have a whole collection. I got some old PSM magazines we can go through. But anyway, that's it. This is Nintendo Power. We went through it, checked it out. It was fun. Alright, guys. I will see you on wherever, man. Let me think what I'm doing. Uh, I guess I'll be playing Dragon Warrior, finishing that up. Or Dragon Quest, I should say. Uh, seven Days to Die. I have to reload Doom. I'm going to get back on that. Alright, I got a lot to do. Alright guys, I'll see you in the future.